I wanted to give you another example of a solid of common cross-section and how we can set up an integral to represent the volume of this solid and we'll actually go ahead and evaluate it for this example. So this is an example that's similar to one of the problems you have in the textbook. It's finding the volume of a pyramid. Uh, we're going to use an integral to do so uh, with a square base and a height of four units. So the first step we need to do is to draw a picture and it's yeah, it's a challenge to draw a pyramid, uh, we'll have to say. I did this ahead of time just so I wouldn't take so much time um, <laughs> showing you. But uh, first of all, we draw the x and y axes, and we're going to use the y axis as the height indicator for the pyramid. Notice that the base of the pyramid is centered at the origin, and we've got it going up to 4 on the y axis. That's the height of the pyramid, which is 4. And then it's going to have a base, and we'll, we'll have it have a base of um, Four. It's a square base, um, side length four. I actually probably should have indicated that up here as well. So um, the square base, I'm going to insert here of side length four. And the height of h equals four units. Okay, so this gives us enough information to get the square base, which has units, uh, four units each way. And we're going from negative 2 to 2 on the x-axis to show that that has the correct um, base. Now, <clears throat> what we see here is that the cross-sections that we could form to generate this pyramid are squares. And you can actually see this a little better in a demonstration I'll show you. Um, let me go over to that now. Um, this is in Excel, and it's actually available to you if you're interested on the M drive in the Courses folder. Um, anyway, you, you can ask me about it later if you'd like. But um, basically, we can take this scroll bar, and we can see this cross section, which is a square. And if I move that, whoops, if I move this scroll bar through, we can see that we generate uh, various squares that various um, square boxes essentially that would stack on top of each other to form the pyramid. Now, I guess initially it would sort of look like a Mayan pyramid if you have thick thick boxes, thick square boxes, but if you make them thin enough, it'll look a lot like the Egyptian pyramids that are smooth, which is what we're aiming at here. Um, so you get the idea? I'm hoping. So these square cross, square cross sections are generating the pyramid. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on one of these, and this is where we're going to go back to the other screen, and we're going to think about it having a thickness, uh, which will indicate with um, delta y and it's going to have a um, <clears throat> well, the dimensions we're going to have to get are from the, the dotted line right here and maybe I'll put it in a different color put it in black so you can see it better uh, maybe green just different color so from here from here down to here this is where that square is always going to be um, determining, the square will be de determined in terms of its dimensions by where this line is on the, uh, on the pyramid. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this again over to the right and we'll draw the x and y axes and oops, and then we'll put in the 4 and the 2, and then we're going to put in that line right there. Now inside there we can maybe use a different color for a representative rectangle. This is going to actually be okay. So this is our representative rectangle. This is actually going to be essentially half of um, the distance across one of these squares. So that distance is what we're going to use to generate the cross-section dimensions of the square cross-sections that we're going to use. We draw a picture of the cross-sections. So we want the distance across the whole square. This is half of it. Notice it goes over this way still. That would be the whole thing. So let's see. Right minus left to get half of this. We need to know the formula for this um, this line right here, well, let's see. Um, 
we know the equation would be y equals, it's going to have a slope of negative 2, rise over run, think about the points there. So negative 2x plus 4, double check that it works, it's got a y-intercept of 0, 4, and if you put 2 in, we get 0, so that works. And we need this to be a horizontal, so we're going to solve it for x. So adding the 2x, subtracting the y, we'd get um, x equals 4 minus y over 2, or 2 minus y over 2, either way you want to write it here. Okay, so what we really want is two times that, because we're going to go um, not just that distance, but all the way across. And so we're going to end up with twice this, or 4 minus y, as the dimensions of the square on both dimensions. Okay, this is determining the dimensions of the square. So here we've got half of it. Twice it will give us the distance, the length of one square side of the square. And then the other side of the square, since it's square, is going to be the same. So you end up with 4 minus y by 4 minus y. For the area of this cross section, we can multiply them together. You know, the area of a square. Let's see, that actually gets pushed off the edge, doesn't it? Um, let me move that in here a little bit. OK, so now we have the um, square. Let's write the um, area formula for the cross section. So remember, we can write it as delta a sub i. Or in the context of this problem, we often write it as a of, in this case, it's going to be y sub i. So let's see, here it's going to be 4 minus y sub i quantity squared. That would be the area formula. And now we want to find the volume. Let's move down a little bit. So we're going to end up with uh, the integral um, from, let's see, y goes from bottom to top of the pyramid, 0 to 4. And we're integrating a of y sub i, which in this case is 4 minus y quantity squared dy. From there, we should be able to um, integrate this thing. So let's see, we've got um, 16 minus, well, honestly, we'd, we could use a mental u substitution, the uh, anti derivative of this, we're going to have to think about du would be a negative 1 out front. So <clears throat> so let's actually put uh, a negative in front and a negative here. So we can see that we've got it. And then using this approach, you can certainly do it the other way here, but using this approach, we end up with a negative value of, let's see, 4 minus y to the third over 3, evaluated from 0 to 4. So let's see if that takes care of it. Notice again, the derivative of this would be um, 3, which would cancel with this 3, uh, times 4 minus y to the second power, times the derivative of 4 minus y with respect to y, which would be negative 1, which would cancel with this negative and take care of these negatives here, giving us back this expression here. Okay, so let's see, we end up with a negative, putting 4 in there, we get 0 minus a negative, so that becomes plus 4 to the third over 3, and ends up simplifying to 64 thirds cubic units. And now the question is, does that make sense? Well, it's a pyramid, so we should be able to figure out the volume of the same pyramid using a regular formula. Let's move this up a little bit and uh, think about this. So the volume of a pyramid is going to be equal to the area of the base times the height, but because it's a pyramid, we're going to divide by 3. It's one-third of base times height. So in this case, that's going to be one third, the area of the base is 
4 times 4, so 4 squared, times the height, which is 4. So that gives us 16 times 4, 64 thirds cubic units, just using geometry. And that verifies what we came up with with the integral. Hopefully this is helpful. This gives you another example of how we can use um, an integral along with this common cross-section idea to determine the volume of a solid. Okay, that's not a solid of revolution. Alright, that's it for this one.